Good morning and welcome to a quick bulletin on the angry astronaut. As you can see, I am once again not at my property, but instead in a hotel room. I am a glutton for punishment, I think, when it comes to chasing down launches, but honestly, I think it's important that I cover this particular launch. For those of you who haven't heard, I am on my way to cover the Rocket Lab launch from Wallops Island in Virginia. I've never actually been to this launch facility. I think there's a lot of content that can certainly be gained from this journey. Plus, it's also just incredibly important not only to Rocket Lab, but also for the future of small sat launchers in general. Thanks very much to everybody who has supported this journey, and thanks in advance to anybody else who might want to support this content in the future while I'm up here. Okay, let's get on to Starship and Vulcan. It's almost as if all of this was done by design. This seems to be a race that has been put together by ULA and SpaceX. Certainly not on purpose, but at the same time, that is exactly how things are winding down. The booster second stage, all of the components for Vulcan Centaur have now been delivered to Cape Canaveral for final testing before a launch takes place. There is, of course, a number of things that need to be done before this rocket can actually be launched, but at the same time, a great number of tests have already been carried out on this rocket before it was even shipped. Nevertheless, there's certainly some fueling tests and also a wet dress rehearsal, then a static fire before the thing can actually get off the pad, which isn't terribly different from what Starship has ahead of it at the moment. So what really does Starship have left? Well, it's kind of hard to tell because there's more than just a booster and an orbiter at Boca Chica at the moment that appears to be getting ready for launch. They have Booster 7 there, but also Booster 8 and Booster 9. There seems to have been some exchanging of parts going on between Booster 7 and 8, perhaps to get Booster 7 ready for an orbital test, but in my opinion, that's not what's going on. Instead, Booster 7, as I said before, is going to be used for a variety of tests, including the wet dress rehearsal, including static fires, a new static fire campaign to make sure everything is ready, make sure the engines are properly prepared, tested, before they actually attempt an orbital launch. And that orbital launch attempt is not going to happen with Booster 7. It may not even happen with S-24, given that S-25 has now been delivered to the launch facility as well. In my opinion, it's very likely that Booster 9 will be used for the actual orbital test and everything else out at Boca Chica is being used for all the preparations. Now, the 33 engines that are currently there, I believe that those are very likely going to be used for the orbital test. But that being the case, I don't think that they're going to be used on Booster 7, but rather on Booster 9. There's just quite a number of things that still need to take place if SpaceX really wants to have a decent chance of a successful launch. At this stage, what really constitutes a successful launch? Well, at this stage, I believe that SpaceX would regard anything better than an explosion on the pad or an airburst just over the pad as being a success of some kind. I think that they fully intend to have some problems with this rocket, a lot of the components being untested, and of course the enormous amount of power being generated by a very complicated propulsion system. There's just a lot of things still ahead with this rocket, and I have a feeling, and Elon has said as much, that there is very probably going to be some initial failures before the rocket actually successfully gets to orbit and can actually successfully Successfully carry out a re entry attempt. Whereas Vulcan, well, Vulcan may have some more steps officially in front of it because Starship could complete a wet dress rehearsal today, for all we know, at least with Booster 7. But all of the components, all of the parts of Vulcan are now fully tested to failure. This is a fully mature rocket that is intended to make it not only to orbit, but all the way to the moon 
on the first try. Will it actually do it on the first try? I'd give it a 50-50 chance, really. Brand new rockets are always extremely dangerous, even though ULA didn't have a failure when they transitioned between the Atlas III and the Atlas V. These are brand new engines. The BE-4s are a huge unknown quantity, and that, I think, puts the entire test at risk. Well, this is a mission, not a test. So there are a lot of unknown quantities with the UA launch as well. That being said, though, there's also the FAA unknown quantity. There at, we still don't have a launch license approved from the FAA yet. That's a very big deal, and we have no indication as to whether or not SpaceX has really satisfied all the requirements that the FAA is going to put in front of them is jump through all the hoops before they're even going to grant a launch license. And without a launch license, Starship can't fly at all. And that is a very big barrier. So when it comes right down to it, we can speculate all we want to about Starship, but we really don't know. There are, in my opinion, more unknown quantities with Starship than there is with Vulcan Centaur. And it's why I continue to believe that Vulcan is going to take flight first. However, it's very important that Starship flies very soon because there are so many things that still need to be wrapped up with Starship before it can be a viable HLS system. A huge amount of things, life support, low Earth orbit refueling, it just needs to be a much more mature system. Also, reusability needs to be largely mastered if you really want to carry out low Earth orbit refueling affordably. All of these things, again, are still unknown quantities, and it is for this reason, and this is going to be very, very controversial, and I think it's going to trigger a lot of people, but the NASA Office of Inspector General should conduct an investigation as to exactly where Starship really is. And why do I say this? Well, you know, SpaceX, in my opinion, could afford to be a completely opaque organization as long as they didn't have lots of taxpayer dollars and an extremely important project riding on the success of their launch system. That is no longer the case. If Starship does not prove to be viable, Artemis 3 will not be happening for a very long time. The competitive HLS systems that are out out there they are not going to be tested or indeed even at any kind of level of maturity until well after Artemis 3 is scheduled to take place it's important that Starship get finished on time and we really don't have any solid indications as to whether or not that's really going to happen. Yes, there are the NASA liaisons uh, with SpaceX who seem to be very confident, but we've seen that before. We saw that with SLS. What really is the story? Now, just to be clear, I still believe that Starship is absolutely the solution for exploring the universe in the long run. I believe that it's the best solution for establishing a permanent human presence on the moon. But that being said, I'm not 100% confident that it's going to be ready to land on the moon by 2026 with passengers. And I think it's important that the Office of Inspector General determines exactly where we are in this process to determine whether or not contingency plans need to start now. And also more money needs to be invested in those contingency plans. At the moment, we really don't have have an earthly idea as to whether or not Starship is really going to be ready by 2025, 26, even 2027. There are so many steps remaining in turning Starship from what it is now into a viable HLS system in the future. I think that there needs to be an independent investigation if for no other reason to give us a self, a sense of assurance, a sense of confidence as we push forward towards the last stages of landing on the moon. And really, I don't think we have that right now. We still have a lot of unanswered questions that need to be resolved. But hell, when it comes right down to it, I hope that I'm wrong. I hope that Starship heads to orbit and has a very successful test before Vulcan 
Ocean Centaur even gets off the ground. Why? Because I want a tattoo on my butt? No, because Starship being successful sooner rather than later is exactly what it's going to take to make Artemis successful sooner rather than later. Smash that like, hit that subscribe, and as always, stay angry about space.